All right. What is up, Jason? Welcome. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Hey, man, I'm really excited. So the plan is to just do like a quick 15 minute chat to go over any things related to this talk you're doing at the JavaScript or WordPress conference. And I think we're, we're already set. We're going to do something GraphQL-y, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. for sure. So what is, what's kind of latest on your mind with all of that? Again, this is, this is not a conference for JavaScript beginners. It's really meant to provide them some good nuggets that they could really dig into deeper, learn more about in order to understand. Um, but I'm just curious, you know, wh where's your head at been lately with all of this? Yeah, so um, there are lot of, lots of cool stuff with GraphQL, especially with the WP GraphQL plugin. So uh, one, one thing we actually just added support for recently is batch request support so cool. uh which is really cool and i'll probably do some sort of demo with that um using apollo client which is like a caching client yep. um so and the, the way batch requests work like so you can write multiple queries like to hydrate data into something like a reactor view component for example and then like when your react app or whatever boots up or whatever uh, it can send all these queries in one HTTP request. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like a REST request, you're going to have to hit separate endpoints with separate requests. So yeah. here uh, I can send a, a single HTTP request, get many resources returned to me at once. Um, so super powerful thing. Um, so I'll probably highlight that to some degree and how to use it with like the Apollo client. Um, I, I don't have like full details on exactly what I'll do, but probably something cool. no with okay. those features. To what extent do you think it's going to be like a kind of here's what GraphQL does and what it can do versus like, here's what we can do with it with WordPress and the, the WP GraphQL <laughs> WordPress plugin. Yeah. I, th I think uh, there's got to be a little bit of a intro to GraphQL um, just yep. to get people caught up. Um, I've done several talks on that already, so I don't want to, just be super redundant because you can go watch those talks already. Yeah, I think we could definitely point folks to your other work. But I think I think for people that aren't familiar with that already, you got to, to some degree, get them up to speed on, you know, what GraphQL is. So there's definitely going to be an intro to GraphQL. Um, I've also done other talks on, like, how GraphQL compares to REST. I'll probably not get into detail on that because you okay. can look that up as well. Okay. Um, if people have questions on that, I don't know how long we'll have for QA. You know, I'm happy to get into that, but I don't want to – I don't want to give like a redundant talk, you know, like yeah, I want to give something fresh and new. Yeah. I think we'll have about 10 minutes for Q and a, and then okay. um, folks could just follow up in Slack or something outside of it. Um, yeah. Maybe what we could do then, do you think it would be all right to throw in a slide at the beginning, just showing some of the past talks you've given so that it's yeah. there and people could easily go back and check all that out. Yeah, for sure. That'd be good. Yeah. Okay, cool. So then my last question kind of along this uh, was, to what extent, if any, do you want to use this or should we be using this as kind of a platform to push for more GraphQL, whether it's in normal sites or whether it's getting core, you know, I mean, I know the core team is super busy and it's something that they want to have, right? It's not like yeah. everybody's like, no, we hate GraphQL, but uh, I'm just curious because uh, you're pretty involved with that process. Does that, is that something we want to bring up too or? Yeah, I mean, so as far as, as far as like getting GraphQL to core, I think that's a whole another conversation. But uh, as far like I want to, I want WP GraphQL to be a useful tool for whoever thinks it's useful for their project. Um, whether it one day makes it to core or not, I don't really care. Okay. Um, I I think it'd be cool if it was in core, but there's a lot of I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I think it's a very useful tool, though. I think anybody who's using WordPress as like a headless CMS, or even even inside the context of WordPress PHP, like you can you can use WP GraphQL to write declarative queries instead of hand coding WP query and WP tax queries. You can use WP GraphQL inside of PHP to get your data gathered in in a declarative fashion. So, I mean, it's it's a very useful tool. Um, but I don't, I don't want to push it on anybody like it's the cool. only way to solve certain problems. I just want it to be a helpful tool. Um, and, and if the community says, yeah, this is super helpful and wants it in core, like I'll help champion that, but I'm not going to like try and force it. Um, 
Okay, cool. That sounds good. Yeah, the thing that you mentioned about not just adding another layer on top of what's the REST API, but actually getting underneath and getting the request set up how um, you need is like kind of setting up a GraphQL type server part of this, or is that not really necessary or something well, to get us deep into? Well, the, the plugin itself is the GraphQL server. Like WordPress, when you activate the plugin, your WordPress site becomes the GraphQL server. So, um, so you can just communicate directly with your WordPress site with GraphQL now. Uh, the other side, you have to have a GraphQL client, uh, but that's really a GraphQL client is anything that can make an HTTP request. Yeah. So it can, be, it can be curl, it can be JavaScript, it can be PHP. Like we actually, uh, the projects that I was working on when I started working on WP GraphQL was migrating content from server to server. So we weren't doing like single page app work. We were actually taking content from one server and you know, when somebody clicked publish, we would send it out to four other WordPress sites. So it was our client in our case was another server. It wasn't actually a, like a JavaScript client. Although JavaScript yeah. clients are probably the most common use of GraphQL at, the point, at this point. Anything that can make an HTTP request is a client. So what are you kind of thinking in terms of, and I know we don't have this totally nailed down yet, um, examples or what to show, um, what's kind of on your mind with good use cases lately for this? Yeah, so I actually uh, built, so I spoke at uh, WordCamp Phoenix, uh, what oh, was cool. that, like two weeks ago? Yeah. And I actually built a resource uh, to demonstrate there called playground.wpgraphql.com. Okay. Uh, so yeah, playground.wpgraphql.com. And so basically that's a, a little React app that just has some links to, to different examples of GraphQL queries. Uh, so I'll probably sh possibly highlight that to some degree just to kind of give an intro to like how GraphQL works. That's all open source code too. So how, how that nice. little app itself was built is all in the open. Um, so I'll probably show some stuff from that. I've also been working on uh, another project. So I'm kind of in the camp with like, like the, when the REST API was being discussed, should, should it go into core or not? And some people were in the camp that, it, that hey, it has to do everything WordPress admin can do before it's a complete API. Yeah. And I think they're kind of figuring out like, oh, maybe it's not quite a complete API right now. Um, so I'm actually kind of in that camp. Before I consider like, we're not technically at 1.0 with WP GraphQL. And I'm okay. kind of in the camp. I don't want to label it 1.0 until I can validate that it can do everything or, you know, a majority of what WordPress itself can do. So I actually started a project called dashboard.wpgraphql oh, where cool. I'm basically going to re recreate a vanilla WordPress dashboard with GraphQL. So depending on what progress, I just started that over the weekend. So it's very, <laughs> very infant stages. But uh, I have a feeling I'll be pretty far with that by the time we talk. So I'll probably highlight some things with oh, that. That would be cool. And I'll keep that all open source too. Um, one of the things I want to do too is create like kind of a component library. Um, it'll probably be React, but if people that are familiar with Vue or anything else want to make other versions of it, that'd be sweet. But basically I want to create like component library that you can just install a component like, I don't know, a category checkbox right? That's a React component that hydrates the data from, you know, GraphQL query to get categories or whatever. And then you can just install that and put it in your application. Um, oh, nice. So I want to, I want to build kind of like a library of like components, kind of like, you know, template parts and WordPress themes, but React components that, you know, can yep. smartly get data through a GraphQL request. And then you'll be able to just take those components and, and piece them together um, when you're building an app. Um, and then also, depending on where Gutenberg gets by that point, I would love to have some level of Gutenberg support. But unfortunately, Gutenberg right now doesn't really have a server-side API, or it's a very thin server-side API, which uh, means APIs like GraphQL or even REST uh, can't really do a whole lot with blocks themselves. Um, yeah, it seems to be it's really meant to just work with the WordPress REST API right there. They have some abstractions on top of the request yeah. for that. that Make it make it pretty smooth. I like what they've done there, but yeah, we'll we'll see where it gets. But you know, if you're building stuff in that component way, then it makes so much sense. It should be able to once it's ready to just slip into Gutenberg, right? Like, yeah, ever component. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So 
so we'll see. I'd love to demonstrate something with Gutenberg. I've I have some prototype support w of of how it could work with Gutenberg, but um, like I tweeted about it like back almost like what eight nine months ago when Gutenberg. Was <laughs> um, but it, it, it Gutenberg's still not stable enough to even like for me at least to feel like I should invest more time in working with it. So I need to. We'll see. We'll see what happens with Gutenberg. But I'd love to demo something with that. Okay, cool. Sweet. So it sounds like we've got a pretty good high level idea. We know we don't want to repeat too much of what you've done before, but we want a decent outline and kind of a review to get people up and ready. And then a combination of just, it sounds more like you want to do some more demos of it or, and not as much, I guess, going under the hood and showing how the plugin is actually built necessarily. Is that accurate or? Um, probably, but I'd, I'd be happy to go either way, depending on what you think is more valuable. I feel like for a JavaScript conference, it'd probably be better to see how to use the plugin than okay. like, cause it's all P like the plugins built in PHP. Yeah. So if you're learning JavaScript, uh, I mean, I'm happy to get into that. Um, but I feel like the more value would be like, how do I consume this data in a single page app, for example? So that's probably where I'll focus most, most of the time. Cool. I like that, man. And uh, I guess just the, I don't want to make this too long so we could wrap up in a moment here, but um, I'm trying to, my, my goal is to have all the talks progressively fit one into another and make sense in context. Unfortunately, due to time constraints and uh, time zones, it's going to be really tough to pull that off. So I just wanted to check, like, is it okay in that kind of hour window I gave you, if I just like gave you a time that you'd probably be able to accommodate, or are there certain times that or better or wouldn't work or um at the moment sense. i think i should be pretty flexible yeah cool. um i should make anything work <laughs> okay um let's see anything else we want to chat about or get into here on our little little call uh not i don't have anything <laughs> okay cool well, we will wrap it up then. I just want to say thanks again, man. I'm excited. Hopefully folks that have gone back and watched this found it a little bit interesting to see some of the behind the scenes, how it goes. But I think Jason's going to do an awesome job and uh, this will go really well, man. Cool. Thanks for having me. All right. Ciao, man. Yep. See you.